Uh, hey, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rhino Chill Podcast. Listen, oh my gosh, this is the show oh where you come God. to learn, learn, listen, grow, upgrade oh your life goodness. personally and professionally. Listen, uh, because of you, our listeners, you know, we, we've had some great success, great guests, great knowledge. Today, I have one of the most amazing, amazing humans on the planet. She is known as the Gold Queen. She makes, <laughs> fi- she makes finance look fun to people that aren't even in finance. Daniela Cambone, welcome to the show. You are a rock star. How are you? You are a rock star. I love the energy, Ryan. It's been a long time coming. Thank you for having me on. It has. Okay. I want to get right in. I want to get right into this. Okay. So I think I met, I'm just trying to figure out how you came on my radar. I think it was from Nancy. Nancy. uh, Yeah. Kevin. Kevin. Shout out, yeah, shout out to Nancy. And I'm like, yo, when I when I talk to Daniela, I'm like, I have to give Nancy a shout out because yeah. this all co- this all came from Nancy. Um, how the heck did you get into to finance? I seen your tweet about you selling shoes, which I thought was so funny. Um, <laughs> and I used to I used to call socks. myself, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, socks. So my business cards are socks. So tell us, like, tell us about your journey of like going from socks to just becoming this financial powerhouse and voice. Right, right. Uh, okay, so the stock thing, the, so I was 15 years old, actually. I wonder if it was even legal that I was working. <laughs> so that was just a summer job. I remember it was just to show that I was always like hustling. And I remember I had to run a sock shop on Monklin Street in NDG, shout out NDG in Montreal. Um, and, and, you know, I, and then I was just working retail while I was in school. Then I was like selling dishes at Stokes, if you guys remember that, that, that store in Canada. Um, but then how I got into finance, it's, it's really quite interesting. And I actually went back to my old high school to give a talk to the girls there, uh, mm. because I was not that person. Like if you had told me in high school, you're going to have a great career in finance. I would have been like, Ryan, you're <laughs> like from another planet. Well, I would have said something <laughs> else, but let's keep this friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Let's hey, this, this, sh- this, this, this show is real talk. This is your home. <laughs> me, me, casa, su casa, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I never, I, I, and again, this goes back to what Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor mm. Dad, always says, we're not taught finance properly in school. And if mm, we true. were, and if one day I could go back and change the system, I would love to do that because it is so exciting and, 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 and amazing but I don't think it's properly taught. So I never thought I was gonna have a career in finance. Anyways, I wanted to just be a political journalist. So I went into politi- um, into journalism at Concordia University, thought I was gonna cover politics. Um, I got out of J school and the first job I was offered was uh, you know, Magazine Finance, which was a financial magazine in Montreal. And I remember going in for that job interview and they're like, what do you know about finance? And I was like, ah, zero. And he's like, great. <laughs> Like, I didn't know how to read a bank report, like nothing, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, stocks, what's that? Like, this is like, yeah. I mean, ground zero stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I had a great editor who took me under um, their wing, and I fell in love with financial journalism. For a bit, I took a break, ended up covering political journalism, and realized how much I hated it. I was like, I don't want to be chasing down these politicians, doing these scrums, and so um, I ended up just sticking to financial journalism, loving, falling in love with it, like I said. And yeah, and then how I got into gold is a completely different story because then I would <laughs> never saw that coming either. And that's really been um, such a blessing in my life because through gold, I met my husband. Now I have my two beautiful children. So gold's done a lot of wonderful things for me. Well, I want to talk about like, so- well, I, well, it, oh, and I, I, I love you. You're true. You're truly amazing, and you're, you're so sincere. And I think that's, you know, when I met you through Nancy, that's the first thing I really picked up on was, you know, you know, in business, there's some, you know, questionable oh, yeah. characters, but you're somebody who is extremely <laughs> authentic. And you know what I love about you is you just always show up as yourself. And I always say in life, let's not rehearse to show up as ourselves. Let's exactly. just show up as ourselves, right? That's so I want to ask you this: What is your daily like? How are you like, are you reading lots of books, articles like Kevin O'Leary put out something the other day and he said, look, if you're in the finance or the investment sector, you need to stay on top of your stuff. The the, the market is moving at like crazy pace. Can you give us an idea of like when you wake up, how you're staying on top of what's going on in the world? He is absolutely correct. I am like, so people are like, what, what, what hours do you work? I'm like, no, no, no. 
I'm always working. It is this is 24 <laughs> hours, but because I love what I do, like you, Ryan. Yes. Um, you know, I don't consider it work. I consider it like mm. education and tools and empowering myself. Mm. Right? Like mm. it's making me the best version that I can bring for the audience, right? So I'm oh I don't watch TV shows. Like I mm. literally just watched White Lotus because of a plane. Oh that I had. <laughs> so I was okay. Able- oh. Okay, so, but what, wait a sec, though. Put a pin in that. What did you think of White Lotus? Yo, I love season I see- two. I was able to get through season one, season two. I love season two, but I did not see that ending coming. I'm not gonna, oh. I'm not gonna spoil it because someone kind of ruined it for me on the plane. They're like, oh, but you know that she doesn't. Come. <laughs> don't and I'm like, don't spoil it. <laughs> and I have like 30 minutes left. Any who's yes. So I kind of between the kids and my career, I stopped watching TV shows. So do not come and talk to me about pop culture because I'm I don't know. All I do is digest and watch news and read news all the time. So yes, I'm on I'm on top of it all the time. I'm just reading everything, Wall Street Journal, uh, you know, New York Times, CNBC, but every global also like watching, you know, shows from all around the world because I just don't want one perspective. Is there any apps? I call that the I call this the tap tap that app segment where we is there any apps on your phone that you're like look this gives me kind of my quick little 365 to you know bird's eye view the finance is there any things that you're like yo these are my top three well, apps that just idea. keep me I, no i'm pretty old school like that like okay i know i'm still like literally going on google and typing in like cnbc.com but um, <laughs> probably have the apps yeah 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 um, uh, but we also have our own research at Stansberry. So I'm also getting like sure. exclusive in-house stuff that I like reading because, you know, I don't just want to regurgitate everything that's already out there. That's nothing new. I want to bring people the inside scoop. So what I do on a weekly basis, uh, basis is talk to my Rolodex of select insiders. So there's actually, mm. and these people will know who I'm talking about, two key people. We have a chat, daily chat, and we're sending each other articles. Ooh and in and information every day ooh, ooh. and that gives me the bulk of my material wow yeah now are these are these just kind of like they're you in, know they're like co- in the co- call colleagues slash friends that you just no, got that no. little vip I mean, or, or complete separate there they are they are <laughs> uh, well, one is extreme i wouldn't say one of canada's most successful people <laughs> and one of the most successful people in, in the world really so i'm very lucky to have him as a friend and then there's someone else who's built a very successful uh twitter following on his own right okay and we are all news junkies and we have this chat and we talk all the time and just throw ideas in there all the time and it gives me such inspiration so you know when they say you know surround yourself by like Ooh. You know, your top five people that should be, you know, should have the same game plan you want, successful people, totally is a game changer. So I just, I, and I thank them, I think a few weeks ago, I was like, I just want to tell you how grateful I am for this, this group chat that we have. Hey, so, Daniela, like what you're hitting on here is everything. First of all, because our a lot of our listeners, you know, love business and everything. And then we also have people that are, you know, esteemed, but then also people that are starting out saying, look, you know, I don't know if this nine to five is getting me to where I want in life. I need to start, you know, securing more different ways of making money or, or different opportunities. But I always tell people, and I, and I like to have my guests come on who've, who have, you know, more expertise in the field than I do is that consider the source of the information you're getting it from. Right. And how important is that for you, especially if you're telling maybe like a new investor, you know, Hey, be careful, like what information and where. It's so true. It's so true. And that's why I think there's such a huge opportunity, um, you know, with Twitter spaces now going to change the game change the game for media going forward and we could talk about that but most of the people think they can watch cnbc and become educated investors no (laughs) and i'm not like cnbc is a greatly produced show you know i have a lot of friends that work there more power to you bloomberg great but they have an agenda to push you're not going to learn about commodities watch you're not going to learn about really crypto and and commodities and things that are considered off the grid like if you just want to invest in stocks that's great but there's more to investing than stocks like Mm. you don't necessarily want to be in equities right now so what's your game plan right you have to Mm. be diversified but i'm afraid that most of the content people digest is not getting them that diversification education So to your point, you have to watch multiple shows. You have exactly to your point. You have to know what their agenda is, what their who their audience is, 
Right, because if you're watching CNN, you know what their game plan is. You watch Fox, you know what their game plan is. So sure. you need to either watch both sides or a source you consider neutral. So what I try and do on my show is present various investing strategies. So I have people mm. that you know, hate commodities, love commodities, love yeah, crypto, yeah, yeah. crypto. You know what I mean? So I try and present different viewpoints, and then hopefully people can have some tools to go home with and start working and figuring out what to do here because it's it's difficult it's overwhelming we're throwing all this information you know daniela listen i want to i want to bring up something because a lot of our like my clients even our audience is probably 65 percent female and your audience absolutely wow, and so nice. so so on ours you know because i mean obviously i have a marketing branding company but i also do like my my coaching on the side and so yeah. i do high level females you know doctors lawyers execs all these things but What's really interesting is that I will see a female. I kind of took a poll because I started hearing the same thing. So I had like five. I think I can think of five names, five clients that I have right now, and I'm, and and I, and they're extremely successful. And I said, "Do you feel happy? Like, do you feel content?" And so some of them have either you know raised kids and worked at the same time. A few said, "Look, I stayed home and raised my kids, and then I went into the workforce." And then others were like, "It was just a shit show the whole time, Ryan, but I made it out." <laughs> I and think so I, I said, would fall into that category. <laughs> uh, and and so and so I said, okay, but you've had this uber success. What, like, what is this missing piece? And so they're just like, you know, Ryan, I really want to have impact, or sometimes I have some guilt that maybe I wasn't the best mother, or and so I really wanted to bring you on the show because I'm like, you're somebody who's thriving in your career, but then I know you have twins, and and you're so candid about it. Like even when we open up the interview, like. Yeah, I just want, I just don't want to, I hope, I hope you can't see my kids' toys in the background. <laughs> You're so real about it, but it's all there, baby. Oh, somewhere so, behind me. So I guess <laughs> then you, then you have kind of the level of, 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 of woman that's maybe starting out to mid where they're saying, geez, I, I, can I have both? Can I be a great mom? Can I have a great career? What would be some like actionable advice that you would give to them? Even like two tips or something like that, where, you're like, you, look, I've been through this. I was hard on myself. And in retrospect, here's kind of what I learned. Is there anything you could kind of provide as a source of inspiration or value to them? Wow. Big wow. question. It's, it's a big <laughs> question. And I want to honor it. I really want to honor it because motherhood, you know, through all the challenges my career sent me. And I, and I became a mom when I was quite established in my career, which, which mm. helped. But I think there's also benefits to, you know, be doing the motherhood thing young and then focusing on your career. Mm. So don't overthink it. However it happens in your life, you will be just fine. So I want to tell women out there, you can have both. You can be happy. You might not be perfect most of the times. And you know what? It's okay. I want to say motherhood is the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. It is the most beautiful thing I have ever done. And it, it is the most humbling experience because you will see yourself at your absolute worst <laughs> and your absolute best. Mm. And um, I don't think there's any other experience on the planet that can give you that perspective. So it has truly humbled me. Um, and as much as I love my career, my kids come first. Ooh. Period. Ooh. 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 So, but again, I understand that I'm at a stage in my career where I can make choices. So I've said no to a lot of ex amazing experiences. Like I was just offered, someone was like, can you come to Positano, Italy to do an interview? Ooh. Ooh. May 20, you know, doesn't that, Ooh. I mean, old Daniela would have been like, get me, you know, get me there now. And I'm like, no, man, I can't just, you know, I can't, like, I need to plan for that. And Side note, shout out to Cafe Positano. My wife and I were there a few years ago. It's absolutely <laughs> incredible. And shout out to Vincenzo that treat us like good. Anyway, so continue. <laughs> I got, maybe I can just come there. It's much easier. Than <laughs> so, so the point is, like, I've had, you know, I say no to a lot of great experiences. I'm, I'm invited to a lot of great shoots. But no, my kids come first now. So I've definitely weaned back on the travel that I used to do. Like, mm. I really worked hard to get here where I am and because I have to travel so much. So I've said no to that and I just say no to it a lot, but I feel great because I want to be there for my kids at the end of the day. So that that that's um, my priority above anything else. Like if they're sick, I'm staying home with them, you know, like I'll, I'll never cancel a shoot like I'm sure you don't, Ryan, but 
And I think I had to postpone ours because my kids were home with some crazy virus that time. So you no, know, your tweet, your tweet was you no, know, your message was like something. It's you're like, yo, my Price. kids are sick. My kids are sick. They're puking. We're gonna have to reschedule or something. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a dad, and you know me. My like my number one role in life is to be the world's best dad. So yes, and I, I think know. I, I love that and about I, you. And, and I think I you, be, you, I think you became a mom, and I became a dad around yes. the same time. Because how old are your twins? So mine are three, but I remember you gave me oh, a real yes. pep talk. I mean, all stages are dif like difficult, right? So mm. I think I spoke to you during the newborn stage when they weren't sleeping. I'm mm. up all night and I'm thinking, yes. how am I going to go not just to work, but on air? And then you're yes. dealt with all this criticism like, oh, she's not looking so good anymore. <laughs> or she's looking hard. And I just want to be like, dude, do you understand <laughs> how it is a miracle of the Lord that I am at, even in front of this camera right now being able to do this interview? So, you know, the critics, are, the people are harsh, as you know, so you have to have thick skin. Um, yes. But you gave me a really good pep talk. And I loved your energy and your outlook on having children. And that, mm. that was truly inspiring to me, Ryan. I just want to say, because you are you are an awesome dad. You are. Thank and you I so love much. the energy. You're, you always show mm. up for your kids no matter what. Even if yes. you're having a bad day, you're sad. Yeah. Yeah. And just with my kids, they won't know. I don't bring it home. Mm. Mm. But to go back to answer your question, yes, women can you can do it. And like I said, one of the things will have to suffer. And I think you should always put your kids first because at the end of the day, no one's in the world's gonna love you like they they will. You know and, what? It's it's funny because my wife and I we have this conversation all the time, and she's like, "Ryan, like your kids are only going to be four. They're only going to be exactly. five once. They're only going to be six once. You can start a business if you're sixty five, man. You can start a business if you're seventy five. Like business is always going to be there. Your kids' phases and development will not. Exactly. And you literally get one crack at bad. And you know, you've met a lot of successful people as a vi, and it's like you have these conversations, and some of them, their biggest regret is they like some of their kids. Honestly, they don't even like them. Because they just were not there for the practice or those monumental moments. You know, my son's six years old. He had his first soccer game yesterday, scores oh. one goal. First oh. game, first goal in 10 seconds. Like I said to my wife, our real estate portfolio is expanding into Lisbon or Madrid because uh, we're going to be going and taking a soccer thing next level. Because whatever we do, we're 10 times in this shit, right? Like I ain't doing no MLS in Canada. Sorry about that, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hell yes. Hell yeah. No, I, absolutely. I don't want to miss a moment. So mm. nothing for me is more important. So like, I don't schedule meetings like past, like if it's their dinner time, bath time, nothing, nothing will come before them. Nothing. So I want to, I want to emphasize for, for people listening right now is that your biggest things you said was say no and feel comfortable saying no, because yep. that's going to, you know, buy your time. Then you're also saying, look, I've also been able to reformat some of my business where especially virtually and things like that. And then your third thing is just simply saying, hey, this is my priority. And I kind of know my professional career, even though, you know, it is established, but I can always kind of recoup what I didn't get, so to speak, yeah, down absolutely. the road. And that's so important. I think especially when we're so afraid to ask, um, mm -hmm. but. You know, and I, and I think it's also important to work if you, I know you work for yourself, but if you work for a company to work mm. with a company that has similar values. So I'm very lucky that Stansberry Research is has been amazing mm. for this in the sense that they set up a studio for me here in New York City on 57th Street. Wow. So I literally can walk my kids to school, walk wow. to this. So it fits with my lifestyle. So I say we, we have power to choose companies like look at their values and do they value family life? Stansberry? Absolutely. So they get it. Um, the management team gets it. So I'm very fortunate for that. But I think that's important. And yes, you you have you can say no. And I think most of the time you'll be surprised that people are receptive. Most people have been parents and get it and are like, yeah, totally. We get that. Like mm. you're just all over the place. You can't show up for that. Like, <laughs> get it, you, you know? So I, I love that. So, OK, so this is what's interesting, too, is that so you're originally from Montreal and then you picked up and left to New York City. Did you go to New York City because of proximity to opportunities and things like that? You feel? So, yeah. So it's funny. I was in Montreal. So I'm yep. born and raised Montrealer. I then moved to Rome for five years. I ended up doing oh. my master's and I was working there. And then my mom mm. was happy because I moved back to Montreal. She's like, mm. finally, we got our Daniela. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 
And then I get I get to make you some sugo. Sugo. Come on, pack it on. Yeah. 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 Um, no, and then I ended up meeting a Wall Street boy. Shout out, Matt. Um, Shout out. And uh and then it just made sense for me to move to New York. Um I felt I had kind of topped out in Montreal anyways. I was ready to to spread my wings. And you know, the move to New York was 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 fantastic. I ended up working mm. on Wall Street alongside Jim Kramer and I really, really learned a lot there. So um it just kind of all fit in. I ended up marrying Matt and now yes. we have together. So that's why I say gold brought us together. And he's in my field, so he gets what I'm yes. doing, like your wife understands what you do. And I of think that course. is so important. Having a spouse that actually understands <laughs> your line of work. Yes. So, and that's, he's my other actually secret executive producer. Cause he's, he, we're always bouncing show ideas. Yes. And he's like, you have this person on, or did you see this? So he's my other secret weapon that people don't see. So well, very one question. Important. One question I get all the time, because my, my wife is a, a much better business person than I am. Shout out to my wife. She's amazing. <laughs> but my wife is the director of operations for our companies. And prior to that, before I even met my wife, my wife had her own business for 12 years yeah. in the health field. And so wow. for there's times that I'm crying under the desk and she's like, yo, dude, uh, where's my husband at? Where, what guy did I marry? Because this guy. Yeah, we don't we don't do this. I we don't do that. that. We get your ass up. I'm allowed 24 hours to whine and cry and do my mansplaining and all the self guilt and pity. I get 24 hours. And then she's like, okay, on the 25th hour, I need to start hearing you talk about solutions so that we can start moving forward here. And it's wow. a rule we have in our house. And I, I have to say it's a great rule because it's like, you know what? Shit happens. But it's like you get 24 hours to feel sorry for yourself and then get on the plan. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that, well, that's so you see. So you see my point. So I'm yes. Wondering. About that it like is important you in the butt when you need it you know so i want to go to okay so you you're you're the host on stansbury research now you have the daniela cambone show which i remember you saying that you really wanted to do uh, a while back what was what is your strategy or what was the inspiration that said i really want to kind of have my own show separate from stansbury if i'm taking that the right way Right, right. So it's it's the Daniela Cambodian show part of, you know, Stansberry. Correct, correct. Well, it's funny. I think I was always manifesting it because when we were thinking of show names, Stansberry was like, what are we going to call this franchise? And then they were like, well, the Daniela Cambodian show. And I was like, that's perfect because this is what I've had in my head this whole time. Um, and yeah, it just kind of all aligned into place. So where I was before, it was more like me just covering news. But here I feel it's more like sit downs mm. with people and I can go in more in depth with them. And if I could take it one step further, that's what I want to do more of is start covering more um, like lifestyle, like what what Ooh. made them successful, why they, Ooh. you know, got where they are. Um, because I have these relationships like you do with, with the people, but just kind of it taking it. I'm always like, look, Ryan, you know, there's going to be a lot of copycats. I was one of the OGs in this sector and then everyone just started popping up, Ooh. which is great. And to your point, there's only going to be one Ryan. There's only going to be one Daniela if you are authentic to yourself and people are either going to like you or not like you. Perfect. Whatever. You have Perfect. to just let that go, right? Yes. Um, so there's, you know what, gonna be you know what, Dale, Danielle, I'm going to put a pin in that. I don't actually want to be liked. I want to be known. I don't give a fuck about being liked. People that are usually liked make no impact. Like if you're making true impact in the world, you're going to piss some people off. And I don't mean you have to be unethical or anything. I just mean that most of the world, let's be honest, they sit on the fence. Fence sitters, it's a nice, cozy place. That's why if we say, like I always ask my guests, what makes a great man? And so a lot of people will admit there's a difference between a nice guy and a good man. Nice right. guys, they go they go to the highest bidder. They're kind of flaily on their goals. A good man is like, I know when to be a fucking savage servant, which means, look, I can go out there and perform and execute at the highest levels. But when I come home to my kids, they're throwing toothpaste in my hair. I, I could put lipstick <laughs> well, on my nose. It's the most humbling experience. Yes. Yes. So for you, like you just said, right? Because again, I get so many people that come to me and the first thing that, you know, oh, Ryan, I want to, I want to live a better life or I want to, yeah. and just remember yeah. my whole thing is that I'm very passionate about media, but I'm very, very passionate about helping people understand that yes. they are true. Yeah. Their superpower is being one of one, meaning the moment you that basically go down a different road than being yourself. Like 
it's over. And that's why I love that quote. You're born an original. Don't die a copy. Exactly. Don't don't. So people were going to try and replicate your style, but it won't work. You know, yes. so just be authentic. And to your point, yeah, people are going to either love it or hate it, whatever, you know, like I, I really just want my mission to be to educate people masses, obviously. Um, mm. And 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 that's it. So then what so where so what yeah. what are we thinking for? I mean, it's oh. interesting because you're a journalist and then you're also in the media business and then also right. the finance sector. What is your like, what is what is Daniela Camboni? Like, what is who are you? You know, like, who are you? Let who the hell is glasses, this? But... Yeah, like, like, no, I just I'm cu I'm curious. Uh... Like, you got this playfulness about you. You got this yeah. seriousness. You will battle like you, you're just such an all around great person. But man, you're on a mission. So it's like, what is that mission? Well, who am I, who I am as a person, I think is quite, is quite, you know, I could just, it's family, friends, mm. health. I've, I'm very old school like that. And I credit, mm. a, you know, my Italian upbringing for that. So like, I, I place a lot on values and I like mm. people who have those values. Mm. And I keep a very tight knit circle of people around me. Few people mm. are able to penetrate the circle and, um, what I want to do is I, I love my audience. I, you know, despite the rude comments we'll get, most of it is quite positive. And I know you say you don't care about being liked, but I do like reading that I'm making a difference in people's mm. lives. So you mm. never know who you're going to reach and the power you have. And I take that responsibility so seriously. Mm. I met a super fan here recently. He ended up, he was a client of my husband's just, this is all by chance. He wanted to meet me and he's a 55 year old man. And he said, you don't know the impact you've had on my life. And I wanted to thank you mm. because before you, I didn't know what money was. I didn't know what to do with it. Mm. I just had it in the bank account. He's like, and I kept losing money. He's like, mm. because of you, I've, well, because of me, I, it's him who did it. He took the, he took the advice from the shows, the experts, not me and implement mm. in his life. So I told him, it's, no, it's because of you, not me. But mm. anywho, he was able to arm himself. He had the tools. He got an investment plan. He was able to pay off his mortgage and pay all his daughter's university and has like trust funds for them now. Like mm. completely, I'm like, wait, what? Like now you're in a much better position than I am. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, so I think the, when I hear that, that just keeps me going. And I'm like, mm. people are listening, people are watching, people are lost and confused and need mm. guidance from real people, authentic mm. people. I have nothing to sell. You know, mm. I'm just, I'm not pumping anything. It's just me. I love talking to people. I love interviewing people. Mm. And if I can help people, then there's no other job on the planet I want to do. This is the greatest job in the world. And we are so lucky and blessed, Ryan, for that. Absolutely. I agree with that. Twitter is your number one place. It seems like you like to play on social. I like Twitter. Yeah. What? So what, what makes you decide Twitter? Instagram, oh, TikTok? Yeah, the like, Instagram, you... I try. Like, people try. Like, Stan Star even was like, why don't you go public with it? I'm just, I, I'm very private as a person. And I feel like yes. the people really care, like, what baby products I'm using or you, I just... <laughs> It doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's being me being on Instagram. So um, my Instagram is private. I mostly just have, you know, my kids pics that I don't really want all over social yes, media. Yes. Um, you know, it's not me showing like, look at my amazing life and I'm here today. And no, that's just not my MO at all. Um, yes. So I like Twitter because it's just business and news and like no nonsense. And once in a while, I'll tweet like a personal photo. But sprinkle it in very rarely so it's just like no nonsense it's not about me myself and i which i feel is instagram yes you know it's it's interesting i mean with the show because I, I mean you're you're at a company i think for us because we're on all the all the platforms and it's you know you always think okay if your message can get to a few more eyeballs then it's worth it you know what i mean and so even of our course. youtube our youtube a year ago we said look we really got to get our youtube cleaned up and and proper so wait, and yeah, yeah, yeah. so hold up let me back that up sure i think it depends on wait if i had a, like a 
pop culture channel or something, then yeah, I would have to be on Instagram mm. and Facebook. So yeah. again, it depends on the type of channel. It depends on your demographic. Um, that yes, yeah, sometimes it would make more sense for some channel to be on TikTok, but I find business news does best on Twitter. And now with this Twitter spaces mm. blowing up, I, I feel that Twitter's the best for it. I want to, so I want to, okay, so unpack this because you've mentioned Twitter spaces twice now. Yeah. Why, why, because, oh, because you, you remember we're doing the Clubhouse stuff back in the day. That's right. Remember Clubhouse? I, yeah. Okay. Do, do you do Clubhouse anymore? No, no Clubhouse yeah, yeah. isn't even a thing anymore. I, I don't know. I just stopped it. But then I seen, because I, I kind of was, you know, not going you too were crazy all on over Twitter. It. I was all over Clubhouse. And then I just thought, this is becoming really time consuming. And so, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, but but yeah. you make a great point because if you're in the media or content business, it's like I'm I always try to because, you know, it's very time intensive. So for me, I'm saying, I, well, I treat content like I treat I treat content like I treat my property or my investment. I say, OK, look, if I invest in this pot, is there a way I can get five different streams of income out of this or is that only going to give me one? So, for example, YouTube, YouTube yeah. is the second largest search engine. So it's like people are still watching our videos from a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, right. Course, course. So you, Twitter spaces. Twitter spaces is live and you like that. What do you love about it? So it's not that I don't love. So I don't, I am still very um, young in this Twitter spaces camp, but based on conversations I've had, I believe that it's the future and we have to jump on it. We saw mm. the move from Tucker Carlson. Mm. Cause he could have mm. gone to Sirius XM. I think it's very telling that he chose Twitter spaces. Mm. What will be interesting to see is how are they going to monetize Twitter spaces? Because mm. no one's quite figured out how to monetize Twitter spaces yet. But why is Twitter spaces great? Elon Musk is behind it, so it's very free. We don't have to. Because the thing with YouTube is they can pull the switch. You could be, done. you know, ghost done like that. So what happens if done. you're just on YouTube? Your business could be over at the done. power of YouTube. Yes. Right? Yes. But not with Twitter spaces. Okay, now let oh, me. You're and then love imagine this. if Twitter video comes out, right? Da so Daniela, I'm going to now come back on you. <laughs> Cambone style. Viva. <laughs> okay, think about what you just said. If YouTube turns the light off, they, they pull the plug on you. Let's be honest here. If you're on social media and you don't own that company, you're building your brand on rented land. Correct. Nobody ever wants no, nobody ever Correct. wants to build a house on rented land. So Correct. the reality is that if you're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, they could all shut you down, right? So for you, that's why I was I say, I know you don't like Instagram or not not that you dislike it. It's not a thing, but I'm like, Daniela, that's a great way to diversify your brand portfolio. We call this brand equity, and brand oh. equity pays <laughs> pays in and perpetuity. I'm here, I am diversity. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to put that point in there. Sorry. Absolutely. Um well, that's a very valid point. And I would hope that if YouTube's going to like shadow ban you, that you do have like some sense of it coming. I mean, you know, the topics to avoid, but we don't yes. have to talk about it. Yes. Because yes. I yeah. <laughs> we won't yes. say certain words that can't be yes. said on YouTube. Yes. Um, so I stay clear of all that. Like, I don't think I'm doing anything that would get me banned. I don't, I'm not, I don't think the risk is high that I'm like losing sleep. Like, but yeah, they could completely change. So, you know, these are internal conversations that we are, we do have of, okay, mm. well, what's our pivot? Where should you be? Yep. And I am looking at Twitter spaces now as I, 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 I do believe with the Tucker Carlson move, that'll be very interesting to see mm. what that will do for our industry. Mm. Huge, huge. It's funny you bring that up too, because it's, uh, he had all these different, like, have you heard of Patrick with David from Valuetainment? You see, you ever see any of his yes. content online? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So, so he, so when Tucker Carlson, the whole thing happened, he made him a hundred million dollar offer to come on and right. basically be his lead, like podcaster. Yeah. But said, no. with Elon, I, I'm, I, I like your perspective on that because you're, you first of all, you like the fact that Elon took over. Can I assume that? Do, do you like that move or? Yeah, I think I do. Okay. I think I do. I think I do. Now, why? What is the basis of that? Because I, because you're, you're I very believe, practical. Yeah, I believe in citizen journalism. I believe Ooh. in free journalism, and Ooh. I believe that's the vision for Twitter. And it may be the only outlet where we're, we, as journalists, are going to be allowed to be free. Wow! I, yeah, love, I don't yeah. think there's any more citizen journalism, and I, I, wow. I, 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 I want to see a return to that. And it's funny because you don't even bring up, and I've talked to a lot of people now that. 
they don't even bring up Facebook. <laughs> like, yeah. like heavy, heavy, heavy hitters. And they're like, ah, I, mean, I don't know. They just got so, you know, yeah. politics. And the, I mean, yeah. 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 Daniela, um, you're getting into finance. Okay. You're thinking about, I mean, you got, let's say you're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. I like to talk a lot uh, about credit. I like to talk about financial literacy. Um, I think that people don't understand their credit as much as they should. Meaning, you know, when you have great credit, credit's like your report card to the finance industry. Oh, yeah. If you have good right. credit, you get cheaper money. You get, you can, you know, you know, borrow cheaper. What would you say to somebody that says, look, Daniela, I don't know if this whole school system is teaching me what I need to know about finance. I need three tips that you could give me as from your expertise to help put me on the right road to a good, you know, financial situation long term. Well, one, watch my show. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, true. Yes. But no, but, but yeah, but no, seriously. Yeah. Watch. I would say there's a lot of good alternative media out there. That's not like crazy talk, like, you know, that are offering financial wisdom. So start finding who you like, like whether it's my show or another show, just start listening. Start from there. Just start mm. there. Like literally go into YouTube and Google. I don't know financial info financial <laughs> literacy 101 or something yeah. right yeah start find someone you like that you click with that you're like that makes sense to me mm. um read books like mm. you don't have to go to school to learn this i didn't i don't have an mba i didn't study finance give, it, okay, give us give us a book and i want to ask you about have you read ray dalio's book principles yes of course and now well, are you giving are, are you giving yeah, that book a, are you absolutely. giving that book a check mark to read absolutely read that okay um, i would definitely read currency wars by jim rickards Ooh, i haven't read that read okay. that read all Ooh. of jim rickards read everything J i love jim rickards though so read <laughs> him i would read doug casey what was the name of his first book Allude. doug casey know. Doug Casey. How many finance books do you think you've read in your your career, oh, like in your life? No. no, no, just just give me like a ballpark, like in the hundreds, if it's that, like just you know, X to X. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I'm reading. I, I first of all, I get sent a lot of books because people want yes. to come on and whatnot. So yeah. I try and read because I think it's the greatest gift. So I have stacks of books, and then I, I I gift them, I share them, and say I want you to read this. Um, yeah, definitely, way over in the hundreds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, and now do you like Kiyosaki's as you too? By the way, read Kiyosaki, rich, rich Kiyosaki. dad, poor dad. But easy to read, beginner. Yes. Now he thinks debt is good. I'm not going to get into the weeds of it. It's a different, different way of thinking. But read it so you can see a different attack plan, and it's an easy read. Yeah, okay, I'm, so. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you a quick question. It's gonna be fun, but you get no statistics behind it. Should you pay off your mortgage as quick as you can, or should you leverage equity that's pre-built and go buy more property? Yes or no? Well, Kiyosaki would tell you the latter, you know? Um, it's ah, a hard, no. <laughs> I, no, I, I can't answer that question because it depends on the situation you're in, sure. right? Do you have, do you have children? Do you not have children? Um, yeah. So, and what's your, I mean, obviously you have greater risk on the second plan, but you also have more opportunity. Of so, course. Yeah. I, I, know, I gotta, I'm, I'm more all about opportunity. So <laughs> da Daniela, you gotta, come on, our, you gotta come on our show a couple of times a year. There's so many questions I want to ask you about finance because finance is such a big topic, but I, I have to be honest with you. Like, I think where your talent is for sure, of course you're educated on it, but it's just the way you deliver it. Like even I've watched your stuff and I'm like, this is like, you're not boring me to death. This is hey, really like, well, I like think even it's so scary and people just throw all these numbers out and I'm like, no, 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 we can pet the problem, make it one with you. Finance is amazing. It's fun. And I try and teach my kids about it. I mean, they're only three, but I'm already like, this is a gold coin. You're not going to learn about this in school, but guess what? It's going to be one of your best friends one day. And I'm here to tell you why. Where do you think the world in your, <laughs> in your opinion, are you excited? Like when you look at your three-year-old kids, are you excited for their future and where the world's no. headed or, or what? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that I've brought you into this era. And I really wish it was the eighties. Wow. No, why do you I feel awful. And yeah, then 
why did I have kids? I guess it's so selfish because I wanted to experience motherhood, but I think this is an awful world and I really hope we can turn it around. You wow. know, like social media terrifies me. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not, they're not there yet, but I'm already like, I don't want iPads. I don't want them to be exposed to all the ugliness and darkness. Yeah. So I'm terrified, Ryan. It, you're terrified. Wow. I thought I thought you I thought I would have to dig more for that. You just told me so straight up. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just terrified. No. Um, you know, I think there's still I think Canada is still a great place to live. So you're lucky you're, you're in Canada. I think it's a great place to re raise children. You're um, a parent. You're, you're a parent now. Um, what are one or two things that you kind of figured like what are I guess what are one or two things that really popped out in your own life that you maybe didn't focus on or even recognize prior to having kids was did kids give you kind of a different perspective or or show you like even for me i would I, i'll give you my examples that becoming a dad for me i think it was always scary i never had a dad growing up so for me i just that i knew my first crack at even experiencing wow. that was going to be when i was a dad so i'm like even certain things i do with my my son or my daughter i'm like oh my god like i i i sense it from their perspective yeah. as a child and then yeah. i sense it from the dad perspective but I don't think I can honestly say I've ever felt insecure about much. I, but as a dad, I feel so insecure and humbled. And it's one of the most beautiful feelings because it, it consistently on a daily basis, just it checks in with me saying, dude, just give it your all, give it your all, get better, get better. And it's exactly. so sobering that it's kind of beautiful. It's hard to explain, but that'd be the one thing for me. I think that, um, I realized, which you probably don't realize before you're a parent, is how you are the center of their universe and you have a blank canvas with them and they're mm. soaking in that info. And mm. I think that's such a tremendous responsibility that I'm like, what, what am I going to fill it with, mm. right? I want to fill it with positivity. I want to teach them about the planets and about you know, nature <laughs> and whatever. I want to educate them. I don't want them to just watch Paw Patrol all day. I want <laughs> to be that parent, you know, and they're, they're soaking it up. And so I'm very careful with my word choices. Mm. Um, I, I mm. am, like, you know, and I, my husband and I have these conversations like we don't want to, you know, you don't want to be too like overthinking it, but they're soaking it in. They're watching mm -hmm. everything you do. You know, mm -hmm. you're their greatest, you're their muse, their inspiration. Mm. Um, and there's such a tremendous power there that I don't think I understood before I was a parent, you know. It's beautiful. Are your kids, do, you, do your kids watch Blippi at all? They're not into the, someone else asked <laughs> about Blippi. So Blip. they're still very much Peppa Pig, Paw Patrol. What's that wow. monster one? Oh. Blaze in the Light. Machine. Oh yeah, Peppa Pig is massive. My daughter Peppa loves Pig. Peppa Pig. Well, it's funny they, they the Peppa Pig because they speak like Peppa now, not with a British accent, but they'll be like hooray and yeah, like Blippy, so Blippy, Blippy's the Michael Jordan of an eighteen month to four year old segment age in the world. Ah. Like like Blip and Blippy's story, like literally legit, is like it's like one of those iconic stories where it's like the guy was like a pizza delivery guy. Oh, and just, Blippy, Blippy, no, Blippy. I, they, I know. They, yeah, I'm all over. They're all over yeah, Blippy. He, he wears so the colorful stuff and all thinking, that. I was thinking Bluey. Oh, okay. No, no. This is Blippy. Blippy. <laughs> oh, wait. Does Blippy have a sad story? Well, Blippy was, he, he did, he's done a few interviews and it was so weird, by the way, to see him out of his, his outfit. But he talks about just, he basically said, like, I was kind of a loser just trying to find something. He's like, I would have all these jobs. I got fired. He's like, I just did not like any of that. And he's like, I knew I wanted to own a business and I just didn't know what. And he said, wow. I think it was, I think it was like, is he worth that guy. Well, I think it was his nephew. He had come over or something. And he said, I just was so good with my, my, my uh, siblings, kids. And I would do these funny little things and these voices. And then he's like, I just thought there's nothing on the internet that addresses well, this age. Funny. My husband nailed it. Cause he's like blippy just copied the blueprint of Pee Wee Herman. You remember 100 percent Yes. So, of okay, course. Whatever. It's all good because he made it his own. All about yep. being on time. Yeah, yeah. But it was smart because there was no Pee Wee Herman of our new generation. So he just no. filled the boy. He took a model that worked in the 90s or whatever. 100 percent and, and and yeah, Blippy. I mean, that guy's worth like bazillion. Oh, yeah. But what it, but that's what that's what it shows yeah. is that new media versus old media. It's like 
you know, Pee Wee Herman had a network. You don't need a network to pop off now. You can go fire up a YouTube I channel. I love that. Right? Yes. You don't need any, but you don't need a producer yes. to say yes or no yes. anymore. And that's what, this is the greatest thing about this generation. As much as I hate social media, the beauty of it is even back in our day, Ryan, we had to go for like mm. auditions, like CBC and all this. And you have to be at the mercy of maybe that producer will like me and give me a chance. Well, sure. guess what? You on social media, you can make it on your own. How many people have? And one hundred percent. One good thing about social media, it is that that you don't need someone to give you a shot. You can be your own shot. It is. It, it, you have it a is. You talent. People have built extremely successful businesses on social media. Massive. So, massive. 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 Yeah. Uh, we're coming to her. And Daniela, listen, I'm gonna I'm starting this tradition on my show where I'm having my previous guest ask the next guest the question. So for my next guest, what question would you ask them? <laughs> I mean, who's the next guest though? Don't yeah. know. No, no, no. It's just such a beautiful, I see. I want to know their favorite food to make. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I like that. What is, what is your favorite? Oh, no, food no, no, make? no. Wait, I have a better question. I have a, I have okay. a good question. If okay. they could go back to their 18 year old self, what would they tell them? Oh, okay. There, so I'll do that. I, I okay. like that. I like Maybe that. Maybe it'll be Nancy. Maybe that's Nancy's all Nancy's awesome. They're they're bit I think they're busy over there doing some uh yeah, some so crazy Nancy, stuff. Because I don't know if we, she's the director of public relations for yeah. Capital. Yes. And uh, she's she's awesome. She's like the now, queen of Toronto. If I'm the queen of gold, she's the queen of Toronto. So there you she, go. She she and she likes sneakers and her dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean anybody who's a sneakerhead and an animal lover is always good with me. Uh go Daniela, listen, oh, I, I, I really shy. I really appreciate talking to you over the I mean, I think how many years is it a couple of years that I kind of in four and out years or at least. Four, yeah. four years and it's it's really interesting cuz you just have the best vibes ever. Um, oh, I just want to, I just want to end off by saying, you know, what can I do for you? I always ask all my guests this question at the end. What can I do for you? Just keep checking in. Cause I love when you do keep yeah. smiling your energy. See, you already transformed my day talking to you now. I'm set for success. So just check whenever you have a moment, check in with me. Cause I love uh, hearing. From you. I love it. And, uh, can you just say, uh, my name is Daniela Camboni. I was just on the Ryan Holt show. My name is Daniela Kambon and I was just on the Reinhold Show! Hey! hey! Listen! We're so glad you enjoyed this episode of the Ryan Holt Show podcast. Please don't forget to smash that five-star review as team hosts will love you for it. Also, say hi to Ryan anywhere on social media using the handle at Ryan Holtz one That's R-Y-A-N-H-O-L-T-Z, the number one. And if you or your business is looking to expand your brand, book a brand jam with Ryan using the link in the show notes.